Second, only to my love of planners is my love of wedding invitations. So we're going to talk all today about how to start your own wedding invitation business as well as we'll creating a wedding invitation suite using Adobe InDesign. Now I've broken today into two parts because the InDesign tutorial is so long. That is a second video that I'll post later this month. So today we're talking all about the logistics on whether to do digital only versus full for service printing, should you niche or not niche, and how to market yourself and how to price your services and your design. So Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous and I help online businesses create beautiful digital downloads using Adobe InDesign. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Monday and Saturday. Today we're talking all about your wedding invitation business. So if you love wedding invitations and you just love paper and stationery, then this might be a really lucrative business for you because people are getting married all over the place. Some people twice, some people thrice. So you're never going to run out of business. And honestly, if you learn how to do wedding invitations, you can probably morph that into doing baby invitations, bridal suite invitations. There are so many other different ways that you can leverage your wedding invitations invitation skills into other lucrative uh, revenue lines. So first, let's just talk about whether or not you should do digital only versus full service printing. Now, I, as a general rule, try to say digital only, and that's just because it has less risk and it's easier to get started. And honestly, you can figure out whether or not you really like this because you might not like designing wedding invitations or you may dislike working with brides or it may, may be something magical. So I think that's something important for you to figure out first. Now, if you're doing digital only, um, you know, think about all the different things that you could offer. And if they're all ma matching, I think that's super helpful as well as being able to provide directions to your um, customers on how to get things printed, or maybe you have printers that you like working with or that are familiar with your designs, but either way you are going to be able, or you're going to have to offer different sizes. So you're going to have to know all the different sizes, even if you are only doing digital, you'll have to understand full bleed. So these are important things, again, that I think are transferable to many different areas of design. Now, let's take the other route if you do full service printing. And honestly, this is um, something that wasn't lucrative for me. It's something like we talked about doing printer or planners and I just the printing part, I don't know, like I know logistically how to do it, but I what I did, which I think is, um, where I went wrong is I tried to DIY everything. So for example, if you're going to do full service printing, the top four things that people are going to want are thermography, and that's kind of the raised letters that are really pretty. And there is embossing and debossing. They're going to want metallic foils, and they could want their invitations to be bedazzled, or they could want it to have what I call like a paper cutting um, design. So, you know, if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette, that's something that could be useful. Now, here's where I went wrong. I tried to do DIY everything myself with kind of crafty tools. So when I say crafty tools, I tried to, you know, just use the Heidi Swap Mink. And as you know, that is not perfect. Um, in fact, I used an iron sometimes, if I'm being totally honest, and debossing and embossing, you might use the, um, I think it's called the Sissix, uh, or you could use the Cuddle bug. And again, you're going to have to buy a lot of the dyes or try to create them on your own. It's so, so time consuming. So if you are doing that and you want to try to run a business, I would advise against it unless you have a staff. Um, or the other exception is if you are able to buy a lot of professional grade equipment when you talk about a letterpress or you talk about thermography or any of those things, and they take up a huge amount of space if you're doing a commercial grade uh, sort of printing, or maybe you have a cousin who owns a print shop, you know, these then, then this becomes a, a viable option, I think, for you. There's the woman, and I mentioned this before in the calligraphy video, her she her, she's married to a professional athlete and she has an amazing studio of um you know professional grade equipment and a full service staff to run it for her so you know if these are things that you have access to then this is definitely full service printing is probably going to be a very lucrative option for you the other thing to think about is you're going to have to find service providers so let's say you still want to do full service printing and you know definitely go for it um in fact i would say go for it using professional 
professional service providers. And if you live in a small town, this may not be an option because you know it will be cost prohibitive for you and time prohibitive for you to drive or get things shipped to you from a printer, maybe that's out of town or you know 10 towns over or something. And also if you are able to establish with them three things. One, you need to bring the actual physical invitations that you want them to create so that they can one, confirm they are able to recreate that and I would definitely ask to see an example. And then two, you're going to want to know what their pricing is. And also three, you're going to need to know their timing. You know, if it's a smaller shop that is more boutique, they might only do printing Monday through Friday or even Monday through Thursday. I had someone do that um, versus maybe a 24 hour around the clock operation that where they have tons of staff and they have so much traffic, that they can get those things for you really quickly. So these are things that you're going to need to find out as well as you will need to find vendors for your materials. So you will be providing paper, lots and lots of paper and possibly satin ribbons or whatever. It depends on how involved your wedding invitations are. And you're going to want to have someone who can sell those to at wholesale prices. Now, a huge um, person that everyone recommends is envelopments. And I have an example here of some envelopment envelopes. Now I find envelopments to be a great solution if you are just starting out and maybe you want to sell uh, wedding invitations, you know, as a one woman show, kind of like a Mary Kay sales rep, but I don't like, you know, a lot of their designs and the paper quality can only go so high. So you're going to have much better paper quality. Like even if I just ran to paper source and bought some envelopes, they are a thousand times higher in quality than the ones that I can get from envelopment uh, at cost. So that is definitely something to think about. And I would strongly suggest either attending the National Stationery Show or joining, there's a group called Creative uh, create creativity or create or I, I don't know, I will leave the link for that below. And that is an association for creative paper-based businesses. And they have a lot of vendors in there that do wholesale. Now there is another woman and I, I forgot her name too, but she has a business where she teaches people how to become wholesalers. And I think it's called Trade Show Boot Camp or Paper, paper Camp. And you might want to reach out to her or her network because she has a, a lot of people who are just now becoming paper wholesalers, and you might be able to work out a partnership or a deal with them if you're just starting out and you guys can both kind of help each other. So these are things that you're going to have to think about if you are going to be providing full service printing options. You have to decide whether you're going to niche or not to niche. A hundred percent, I always say you should definitely niche unless you have a brick and mortar, which I think is the exception. Let's say you own a card shop or maybe you just happen to sell wedding dresses or you're a cake designer or something else. And if you have that foot traffic coming through, you have enough business to have economies of scale, in which case you don't have to niche uh, and you could offer something uh, like full service. So even like I would strongly suggest opening up those kiosks at the mall. I know they're not as fancy and, you know, beautiful as say opening up your own, um, what are those paper stationery stores that they have in the mall or those card shops. However, your costs are going to be much lower. And I think that's still a way for you to gain all of that traffic and you could have little places for them to sit at your kiosk. You know, nothing says that they have to stand at the kiosk and it's still going to get the same high volume of traffic than the person across the hall that is going to be paying, you know, 20 times as much as you for that store. The other thing is when you niche, I would think about niching, especially if you're going to be doing full service printing, is to niche in uh, an area where you have an advantage. So let's say you have a friend or you've developed a really great vendor relationship with someone who does thermography printing for wedding invitations. So then you can become known as the go-to thermographer uh, for wedding invitations. Now, if you go to Paper Source today, you will see the whole wedding invitation section. And inside of there, there is Vera Wang wedding invitations. I know I didn't, I didn't even realize that she did wedding invitations till I started looking into this business, but she has a beautiful swatch of thermography, um, 
like uh, it's just it looks like a keychain and it's a ton of different you know thermography and different colors that is a hundred percent something that you need if you are going to be doing um, full service printing. So, you know, again, if you're going to not niche, um, it's going to be much more expensive than if you do niche. So these are things to think about on how much money you have to invest in your business right up front. And that's not to say, you know, if you're niching today, you can't, you know, de-niche tomorrow and try to offer, you know, more options. Um, just think about where you are today and what's going to work best for you. Now, the third thing I said we could talk about is where to get customers. Customers. And I have four different places I think you can go. And for sure, you know, anytime you think about getting wedding invitation customers, think about going to where they are. So for example, brides are always on Etsy looking for wedding invitations, whether that's digital or that's full service printing. The You could also have your own website, but again, you're probably not getting a lot of traffic there unless you're running Facebook ads to that website. The second part is going to physical bridal shows, bridal conventions. Um, you know, it doesn't even have to be local. I know a, they say a lot of times doing local helps, but you don't necessarily have to do local, you know, especially if you are able to drive within say a 60 or 90 mile radius for this business, that is perfectly acceptable because you probably only need to meet with that person once, um, if that, and then you can ship all of their wedding invitations after that or do everything digitally. The third place that you can go is to collaborate with other vendors. So wedding planners, people who make wedding cakes, people who sell wedding dresses. A lot of times brides, you never know, you know what order they're going to go in and they may just decide to get a dress first or they may just be passing by a wedding dress shop and they haven't even picked a date for their wedding. And if they really like the salesperson or that shop, they might say, hey, can you recommend somebody who does wedding invitations and they could say, yes, we do. Now, what you want to do when you collaborate with these people, and this goes a little bit more into marketing, is to have a wedding invitation book. So if you go into today to Papyrus or Paper Source, they have huge wedding invitation books where people can flip through and it has a ton of different wedding invitation design ideas that they can pick from. You want to have the same thing. Those books are very expensive. Um, you know, if you want to learn how to make those, I do have a couple more videos on how to make notebooks and those, you could just expand that to a large book. And that's what you want to leave with all of those vendors where you're going to have foot traffic. So don't worry about the cost of the book because this is part of your marketing. Um, people, especially with wedding invitations, like to touch and feel them, which goes into number four, which is to always, always, always carry uh, business cards on you. Now, normally I know business cards are so out of style. I don't think I don't have business cards. I don't think any of my friends have business cards. However, if you are a wedding invitation designer or a full service printer, even if you're just doing designs, 100% you should have business cards because that's going to show off one, your style, and two, your ability to create designs for print, which is very different than the ability to create things that are digital or things that are for social media graphics or web websites, you know, you're saying I can create something beautiful that you can touch and feel. So I would suggest not having just one business card, but many business cards in all the different styles that you offer. So let's go back to my other example. If I offer, let's say, embossing and debossing, I for sure should have tons of wedding cards that have both of those so I can show people exactly what I do and give them a little taste on the different styles and what their wedding invitations can look like. Now, if you use um, Silk Cards is a is my favorite vendor for business cards. They have a ton of unique designs. They can pretty much do anything. Let's talk about pricing. So how much should you charge? Now, when you think about charging, my strategy for wedding invitations is you have to remember your bride is not a professional bride. She like she didn't study how to be it. There's not a school on how to be a bride. So she's probably not used to all of the pricing. And so it just boggles my mind when I go on Etsy and I see people pricing things in crazy ways. Like you can get this and then you can add glitter and then you can add an envelope liner and then you can add a ribbon. And then if you want, like you're so overwhelming and confusing this bride, she's probably just going to click over and buy something way simpler and probably not even as pretty as your design because you have like scared her with the pricing. So what I always do is I price things 
things in packages. So for example, I would say there is a, you know, like three levels. So everyone understands small, medium, large, right? So my first offering is a DIY offer. So that's digital only, you know, you have the design, I will change your name, I will change your wedding date, obviously your address, things like that. I will send you the file and then you just take it to the printer and do whatever you want with it. That's probably the easiest way and that's the least expensive, especially if the bride is really trying to be economical and maybe wants to print them at home. Um, that is like a really great option for her. The other option is to do something that's kind of mixed in between and you could say, you know what, I will print your invitations for you up to 100, uh, you know, and it, but it can't have anything fancy. When I say fancy, I'm talking about gold foiling, thermography, embossing, debossing, because sometimes people just want someone to print their wedding invitations and RSVP cards and all that, and they don't need all that fancy schmancy stuff. Now, the large offering is sort of the deluxe brand. So this brand, I say you can have anything you want. You can have thermography, I can deboss this, I can bedazzle it with some Swarovski crystals. It doesn't matter because you've paid for the grand luxe of invitations. So I'm not gonna nickel and dime you. I'm not gonna say, oh, you added a liner. Let me go back through the invitation and add 20 cents. Now, I realize this is very different than the philosophy that a lot of wedding invitation designers have where they'll say, oh, you know, nickel and dime them. That way the price, the base price looks really cheap. Um, I found that when I do that, people kind of get bitter, especially if they're trying to be economical and about the invitations. And then all of a sudden I add all these things and they're kind of like, you kind of dupe me and trick me into uh, paying for all this extra and I don't really want it. You know, don't do the wedding, the inv the wedding uh, envelope liners and I've already ordered them. So, you know, in my experience, I would rather just let people know you can have anything you want. I can do tons of different things. Or maybe if I'm niching, I say I can do any thermography color that you want. Um, but then this way they don't have to worry. Now, also, when we talk about pricing, if you're doing, so let's talk, go back. If you're doing that first one where it's digital only, you're probably just going to charge maybe $25 or $50 for your entire suite of digital downloads because they have to do the printing themselves. It's a quick and easy sell. You're not trying to do a lot of custom custom bespoke work on this. The second option where you're doing printing, you're really going to have to price that out based on paper quality. Now, this is another big area that I think brides get really confused on. So I always say I offer high quality printing options. And that's why, I mean, going back to this envelopments envelope and not to knock them, there's nothing wrong with them, but that's why I never offer envelopments as an option because that's just not my style or the level of uh, professional quality products that I would like to offer. So you could just say everything is a hundred card pound cardstock and above. You know, if you have some something extra or a special paper type, we could talk about that. But in general, this is what I'm going to be offering. Now, most brides are not that savvy on wedding paper and not to knock them, but they're just not too concerned with the paper. They just want a high quality paper and they want it to look nice. And you are going to know based on whether they want thermography or an embossing, what type of paper they are going to need. And again, eyes glazing over and boring them. If you're trying to explain to them, they need a certain type of paper for the printing process that they would like. So again, if you can have that all thought out for them, it's even better for them. Now, if you are interested in pricing and how I put together my packages, I have a pricing template. This is an InDesign and it has templates for bridal showers. It has templates for um, wedding invitation suites. It has templates for me making planners and websites. And it's very, obviously I made it, so I think it's beautiful, but you can customize it with your own look and feel and your branding and your design and then send that out as a professional sort of follow up to a discussion or call with them. Now, personally, whenever I've had high end wedding invitation sales, I've always run it kind of like, I don't want to say Mary Kay, because that sounds like it's not that expensive, but in that way where I make an appointment or maybe I meet with a group of women or I try to talk at a paper source, won't let you talk there, but um, maybe at a wedding 
wedding shop, a dress shop, and I will talk to everybody and I'll bring samples of different wedding invitations that they can try out. So that is something else to think about. Now, if you are interested in starting your own wedding invitation business and you'd like to work one-on-one -on -one and really put together a good business plan, make sure to check the link below because I also do one-on-one -on -one consulting and I just love talking about wedding invitation businesses. So if this is something you're interested in, I want to help you start that. And if not, I will see you guys back here for part two, where we will design a wedding invitation suite all in Adobe InDesign. So just to recap, what did we talk about? Because I know I did a lot of talking today, is first we talked about whether you should do full service printing versus digital only. Second, we talked about whether to niche or not to niche. Third, we talked about where to find your customers. And fourth, we talked about how to price your offerings. All right, I hope that was helpful and I will see you guys next week. Bye.